Hey, this is Wendy Sobal. Um, so today we are still seeing continued activity in both locations on Thrift Zone and at the summit. Uh, this is a kind of more of the same that we've been seeing over the past few days. The eruptive activity in the Lower East Rift Zone is continuing to migrate back to the west along the fissure line. There's an approximately two mile long um, line of activity of, of fountaining, low fountaining of lava, and then those fountains are feeding massive lava flows that are channelized going down to the coast. There's two primary channels that are going down from the, the locus of activity, and the western, or sorry, the easternmost channel has has split into two down at the coast. So now there are three ocean entries at the coast. Uh, Lays is issuing off of those ocean entries, and hopefully we'll get a weather update to, to talk a little bit about that. Um, and the, there seems to be a lot of um, lava being produced by Fissure 7, and that is in Leilania State. The, the flows themselves are moving a little bit to the north, but mostly to the south from that point. And uh, we have field crews on the ground there monitoring the progress of that. They've had a hard time getting closer to those flows because they are so voluminous. And then if we go up to the summit, uh, the summit is pretty socked in today. It's very cloudy, and so we haven't had um, a whole lot of great visual observations of, um, of what's happening at the summit. But we do have some observations from cameras that are up on Mauna Kea. I'm trying to get the exact information about where these images are coming from. But we've seen a couple of plumes rise above the clouds from imagery coming from an observatory on Mauna Kea. And we, uh, we did see uh, a plume go up to about 6,000 feet above sea level, uh, six to 7,000 feet above sea level this morning, but it was just a minor explosion. And then yesterday afternoon, one went up to about 8,000 feet. And then yesterday at about 5 p.m., there was a, a magnitude 3.9 earthquake at the summit of Kilauea. That's the general update for today. Good morning, everyone. Um, we continue to see the trade wind pattern as uh, has been being briefed for the past couple of days. Uh, this trade wind pattern means generally winds are from the northeast and the lower levels. I do want to highlight that today's winds are expected to be the strongest um, that we've seen all week and that we should see in the coming days with gusts up to between 20 and 25 miles per hour possible. I mentioned these stronger winds uh, mainly because if there is an explosion or a plume uh, that occurs at the summit, as Wendy has just briefed, there's been a few, we could see the ash being carried a little farther downwind than we have seen in the past couple of days. However, because of this northeast wind, we are still going to continue to see the plume going to the southwest um, pretty much from the summit down Highway 11 down to Pahol uh, Pahola. I also want to note, though, too, with these gustier winds, uh, the winds can also pick up any ash deposits that have recently fallen and can result in dusty conditions, um, possibly even reduced visibilities. We haven't had that report yet, but it is a potential with the gustier winds. As such, the National Weather Service does um, is continuing to issue a special weather statement in effect for the Cal District, uh, accounting for these hazards pretty much until further notice. Um, one thing of note, uh, Wendy was talking about the different plume heights um, from a sounding that the Weather Service did earlier today. Uh, for your information, it would take a plume height of around 15,000 feet above ground level to have any ash interaction with any of a westerly flow, which would be taking it more towards the helo direction. So again, it would have to get to around 15,000 feet. Most of the plumes and explosions we've seen in the past couple of days have been between the five to 8,000 feet above ground level, which is why uh, we are seeing uh, the ash mainly on, that, on the, the northeast trade winds heading down to the southwest from the summit along Highway 11. And then uh, turning our attention to the areas around the fissures, um, that northeast flow is impacting down there as well. Uh, during the day um, around the fissures, we do get the winds turning a little bit more to the west during the overnight hours, uh, but they do weaken during the overnight, so we don't see too much of um, a turn in direction necessarily of any of the fog. 
um, primarily. Um, the, so as long as the sulfide dioxide is being emitted from the fissures, we do expect the development of the fog in the vicinity of the fissures um, and that northeast flow carrying them to the south and the west. And that looks to be um, ongoing um, for the time being. Um, also mentioned about the lays um, with this flow, um, any of the lays that does form as the lava is entering the ocean should keep um, the threat um, immediate around where that lays is forming at the um, at the coastline um, or taking it out a little into the ocean. And one last thing I want to just touch on um, because um, Wendy did mention about the earthquake. Um, the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center is monitoring every earthquake activity. Um, no tsunami threats at this time by any means, um, but just to make you aware that we are continuing to monitor every single earthquake that does occur, and uh, products will be issued as needed. <laughs>